Welcome to the Believe in the Land show. My name is Andy Billman. Let's take you back through the week that was in Cleveland sports. The D in Cleveland stands for defense, and it is up and running. I mean, motorboating to a championship. Can you feel it? Get on in. The Titans stink. Who cares? We slapped them around. 27-3, two victories so far for the Browns, 20-plus points. Again, Two victories so far, two and one, only two and one, long ways to go. But in two victories, 20 plus point victories. And the loss, as we all know, tortures loss under seven. Just before you can get to anything, that is a sign of a good team. You're winning games at hand. Your loss was close. And because of mistakes, that can be cleaned up. With a defense that's dominating and an offense that showed, showed, some signs of waking up. The possibilities are starting to grow for the Browns of maybe having a big season, even without Nick Chubb. That's what Sunday's victory meant. The analytics tell you that. The eyeball test tells you that. This team is very, very close to doing big things. And they're already on their way to doing big things. What an exciting start. And that game was a blowout. I mean blowout. Bengals, we all know, didn't feel like it was put away until later. But even still, we, we knew we were going to win with about even going to fourth quarter. The Titans game to me, I had no worries after halftime. I really didn't. Once Tannehill got sacked, I'm like, we got this in the bag. That's how good this defense was. That's how good this defense is and was on Sunday. The offense is going to steal the headlines. And it needs to be talked about because Deshaun Watson put together a good game. I thought Deshaun Watson's game really changed after the rougher the passing penalty. I thought after that play, he kind of, I don't know if um, that motivated him or whatnot, but he just seemed like such a different quarterback after that after that hit he took. And that was that was that was a Bush League hit by a Titans defender there on Watson. But Watson's play in this game gives this team a lot of hope. Jerome Ford doing some fun things. And Amari Cooper, who established this last year, but is reestablishing it now, is clearly a number one receiver. The Cowboys, I understand they had contractual problems. But that was a great, great pickup for the Browns. Great pickup. My God. Mark Cooper is very, very good. But this team all starts and ends with defense. And it was dominating. If the Browns didn't have a turnover with Elijah Moore's fumble, the Browns would have shut him out. I thought they were going to shut him out anyways. That's how good this defense is. They're going to get challenged like they did against Pittsburgh. And I believe they're going to get challenged against the Ravens. We'll talk about that. But this defense is on its way. And Miles Garrett had a great, great, great game. One of the all-time best games I've ever seen him play. And I think sometimes we as fans in Cleveland have been too hard on Miles. And I thought last week we were too hard on him as a fan base. And as journalists about T.J. Watt's performance and trying to compare that to what Garrett did. A, that's not fair. B, it's not even comparable because they don't play. It's such a different thing. T.J. Watt's going up against a very different offensive line than what, you know, Miles Garrett was. And on top of it, Miles Garrett in one game does not define a season. That was ridiculous, some of the posts after the game. T.J. Watt, MVP, underline. Like, it's just enough. We'll get to the Steelers down the road, but, you know, happy for Miles Garrett. Happy, happy, happy for Miles Garrett. Happy that he had that big game because he's finally getting the chance to get proper rest, to get proper assistance on his team. And most importantly, he has finally got a real defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz is blossoming Miles Garrett into a much different player. He's already a great player. He's turning him into an elite player in front of our eyes. 
Because even against the Steelers game, I thought Miles Garrett played pretty well. He didn't have much in totals, but I thought he had a pretty good game. In this, in this game, um, he was unstoppable. I thought in the Bengals game, he was very good. Very good three-game start to the season. Very reminiscent of 2020, where Miles Garrett was on his way to very big things in 2020. Very big things. But Garrett was the star among stars. He made the biggest play in this game. That first half, end of the half sack, was the game. That was the game. I did not have any worries. My life as a Browns fan to the Browns gods. I was not worried after that play. I was like, well, I might get tight, might get weird, but we'll figure this out. Titans don't scare me. And because their defense is that elite. And Tannehill had to make perfect throws to get incompletions. And Derrick Henry was non-existent. Think about that, Browns fans. We shut down Derrick Henry. He had nothing on Sunday, nothing. The secondary is there. Zadarius Smith's a great player. JOK and Grand Delpit are both having all world years, both of them. JOK had another. I, I'm really starting to like JOK. Delpit's getting a lot of the chatter, and he deserves it too. He's having that big of a year. Really, He's really blossomed too. So is JOK. JOK is in a lot of these plays for the Browns. He really, really is. And he makes big plays in big spots. Really does. Defense held them to 94 yards. 94 yards. And the rhythm was not there for the Titans all day. They were just swimming in mediocrity. I mean, that was bad. We've we've seen teams like that for the Browns. The Titans are swimming in mediocrity. They're just not very good flowing on offense. And their defense, frankly, is above average. It's good, but it's not great. And obviously, we picked them apart. They have a very young secondary. It's really getting roasted. And their offensive line is showing some wear and tear. Browns took advantage. But Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett. We put so much focus into so many things. He had a huge game. I mean, huge game. Don't remember ever. The only other time I can remember him playing this well was against the Bengals on that Thursday night game back in 2020. Both of them are comparable. But this game was tremendous. Breakout game for Garrett. Then let's flip. Let's go now to Deshaun Watson. Great day. Looked like he really got into a rhythm. Finally playing his way that we are needing on this club to do big things. And he looked good. He really did. After that hit, he took the uh, roughing the passer penalty. That really, I thought, changed his whole game around. It changed everything around. Everything. He is, if he can do what he did on Sunday, watch out. Sky's the limit. <clears throat> he hit passers. He very rarely, after that hit, did anything incorrectly. He didn't get flustered when he was pressured. And there was some pressure at times. Not a lot, but there was some pressure. And he really just did a great job, Sean Watson did. And Amari Cooper, if it wasn't for the defense or the necessity of needing a breakout game from Watson, I think Cooper would be the headliner because I thought he was outstanding. And he's not even fully healthy. Amari Cooper's a very good pro. He really is. I don't think we talk about him enough as a fan base. He is very, very good. It was great seeing Kareem Hunt back on the sidelines. He brought a lot of energy, which was good to see. You can tell he's going to be a vocal leader on this team. That's great to see. Jerome Ford had some moments. The Browns didn't really run the ball well, but who cares? The, the Titans, I thought, were going to take away the run. They did. The Titans, again, are a competent defense. They're good. They had to take one thing away. They said, we're going to take away the defense. I mean, sorry, take away the running game. We're going to post. We're going to force Deshaun Watson to throw, and he did, and he threw the ball ball. This is one of the rare times, even with the clock, um, because, again, the Browns dominated time of possession. Almost 2-1, to one, which in football is a – that's a big margin, huge. And that's what makes this defense so great. It's doing two things. One, it's keeping a scoreboard 
in single digits. But two, it's forcing the opponent's defense to go back on the field. Because, again, the Titans do have a good defense. But their offense is so incompetent that it just wears down. I mean, it just simply wears down. I mean, that Amari Cooper touchdown, you could just tell. Like, that that was a mental error of a team being very tired, being on the field way too long. That's what happens when you have good defenses. That's what happens when you dominate time possession. That's what happens and what's happening in 2023 for the Browns. They are that good. Get on board. Don't get false hoped. This is not Charlie Brown. I'm seeing the real thing. Real thing. Hopkins kicking two is a great sight to see. All these things lead to a big victory. I mean, just a wonderful victory. Again, the Browns have had two 20-plus point victories so far. Wow. Wow, what else can you say? Very remarkable for a team that really had a hard time. Really had a hard time at times even getting themselves together last year. But they have improved. They really have improved. Fantastic win. Now, time to move forward. There's really nothing else to break down. There's there, Again, the big plays that Miles Garrett played in the half that totally sucked the air out of the building. The Titans weren't able to do anything. That's, I mean, that's your game. That's it. You, you can talk about these other players you want to. That's fine. Break down some film, fine. But it's time to move on because now it's time to bigger things. You know, you don't have to celebrate the victory for 48 hours anymore. It's like, hey, we won. Great. Move on. Next. And the Ravens are next. The Ravens gave a big opportunity for the Browns to really grab a hold of this division. The Steelers keep winning, too, as they played the Raiders um, and won in Las Vegas. Big game for the Browns. Always a big game for the Browns, a division game, but big, big, big game. They This will be their third divisional opponent within four weeks. If they can somehow get two, three, and one, take that to the next game against the Niners after a bye week, it sets up the season wonderfully for this team. To have two wins against two opponents, knowing in the back of your head the Steelers will fall apart at some point. I really do think they will. They will. The Steelers at some point will fall apart. It allows for a dreamy scenario for our Browns. It's all going to be about stopping Lamar Jackson. I think it's a very tough matchup for Jackson. I really do. Because I don't know if they're going to be able to run the ball like they typically do. And that means they have to throw, and the Browns have very competent cornerbacks. We'll see if Greg Newsom is back this week. Tough matchup. Big advantage. And as for Watson, this is another test. He's playing a very physical team. This is a, a second out of three physical teams. Or four, I should say, the Steelers are obviously physical too. So this is their second out of four. Watson's going to have to perform again well. They're going to have to find better running lanes. I think this game against the Ravens, it would be surprising for the Ravens to cough up as many opportunities for the Browns to score like the Titans did. Turnovers are big in this game. The Browns got away with one. They are not winning the turnover battle. I think they're going to have to against the Ravens or at least stay even. Can't give the ball to the Ravens. They take it up. They scoop it. They're pros. They know what to do. They will score and score quickly. So my one note is they got to figure out that turnover battle thing. Another little note is I think they got to figure out Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore was a star during the preseason. What happened? He just don't become like – I mean, he's just shockingly – um, not fitting in this offense at all. Maybe you know, might have to figure that out. Gotta get Kareem Hunt the ball more too. I think Kareem needs a few more touches, not a lot, but a few more touches. Which again, I think Hunt getting touches actually gives this team energy, not just because it's played physically on the field, but I think it gives this team some energy, which is good. Great week for the Browns. Huge week ahead. Take care of the Ravens and really get ahead of this division. Browns go to two and one. Big week. Huge week. Then they get a bye. Buckeyes with a huge, huge victory. 
on Saturday against the Irish in South Bend. One of the best games I've seen since the Alabama LSU game. That was a great regular season game. This one was just as good. Just an incredible display of talent. Um, very good teams. Coaching was iffy. Um, boy, Freeman's coaching was iffy. You know, real quickly on the Irish. As I know we're obviously mostly a Buckeyes fan base, but there are some Irish fans in Cleveland. Freeman's going to have a very hard time living that loss down. I'm glad the approach he's taking early on here because that is unacceptable to have 10 men on the field in the final two plays. And he's growing up. He is a young coach, and like young coaches, like young players, young coaches make mistakes too. And he's learning on the fly a little bit. This is his first head coaching gig. I do think Freeman can coach, though. That's the difference here. But that was a grave error in a big game, in a big game that everybody's going to know about the mistake for a long time. Heartbreaking loss if you're an Irish fan. Heartbreaking. Gut wrenching. You have 11 players on the field, maybe you stop. Train them. Jeez, oof, tough way to lose. But as for the Buckeyes, they proved a lot in this game. And I can't tell you how impressed I am by Kyle McCord. I thought he was the big winner in this game. Ryan Day, I'm glad for a celebration. There's some other players. Obviously, Stover is becoming a big player. Abu got a big game. But to me, it's really McCord. McCord really grew up in that game. He is not as talented as Fields or Stroud, but he is a very good college quarterback. He really is. He's a very good quarterback in college. He made some big throws and big spots, and he delivered the win. He got them down the field. I was very impressed. I am very impressed with Kyle McCord. I think he is that good of a quarterback. And for him to have that kind of transformation after the Youngstown State game into the Western Kentucky game into this week is huge. McCord really looks just really looks sound in this game. And then the other player really stands out too. If you want to give a game ball to one, you can give it to McCord. If you want to argue uh, Travion Henderson, I understand that. That's the other guy I can see giving the game ball here. Travion Henderson was wonderful. Wonderful. Big game on the ground, big yards. And he didn't even have 20 carries in this game. The Irish really did a nice job of locking up the Buckeyes late. They really never allowed the Buckeyes to get anything going in the second half. Kudos to the Irish defense. I mean, outside that one run and outside that last drive, really the Buckeyes really had a hard time getting into place, meaning Buckeyes just couldn't get any rhythm going. The, Buc the Irish really did a nice job. That end of the round, end of the end of round play to Abuka was goofy. That was a goofy call. Goofy call. But all that survived in advance, and Trayvon was wonderful. Wonderful. The other big Irish thing in this game was the Irish had a chance with about two and change left, and they just couldn't. Bizarre play calling. Both teams had bizarre play, play, big play calling in bizarre spots. The Buckeyes with that end of the round call, and I thought the first down call um, to Hartman, I mean, it was, it was goofy by the Irish. I mean, that, to lose five yards like that just can't happen. Didn't have a proper blocker on JT. And JT went off in this game. JT was a star in the last drive. He didn't show up until that last drive. But in that last drive, there was JT. The thing that's good about this Buckeyes team, their ceiling is not hit yet. I see this team getting better as the season goes on. I see this team developing more. I see this team getting a lot more acclimated as the season marches on. Fantastic win for Ohio State. Big win. Really, really big win in a big spot. They just executed so well when they had to go down that drive. Abuka was big. Stover, every – I mean, Justin was big. Too, big catch for him. Big catches in this game. Marvin Harrison had a big catch in the final drive. Ryan Day I thought was okay in this game. I thought Freeman was not so good. I think Freeman, though, is going to grow up to be a big coach someday. I'm still on the fence about Day. I need to see more, but a win is a win is a win, and the Buckeyes won. So that is a huge accomplishment. doesn't matter if there's 10 or 9 men on the field or 11. The Buckeyes won that game. 
a good time to have a bye week for the Buckeyes. They get a breath, and they go into Big Ten play. We're going to do a lot on the Guardians next week, a lot on the Guardians next week, um, because the Brownies are off, and Tito's going to be finishing up his career. Uh, this week for the Guardians was a shoulder shrug. They got swept by Kansas City, didn't really look like that much effort. They had good effort against the Orioles. Um, they split, um, winning the first two. Friday night's game was a thrilling win, wild win. Bieber's back. Looks like he's closer. McKenzie, you can tell, is definitely um, – he's a ways away. So it's – you know, and that's fine. So the regular season is winding down. But it's going to take a while for McKenzie to get his sea legs underneath him. But all next week will be about Francona. Then the following week, the Browns are off and will do a lot. So that's really the Guardians. I mean, they're going to – they might even finish third the way this is going. They come into the week tied in the loss column with the Kitty Cats, play the Kitty Cats in person in Detroit. And then finally, Cavs basketball, players start showing up on Tuesday, the 26th. Camp doors open on the 2nd, so a lot of basketball here to come. And that's the week that was in Cleveland sports. And it's all about the Browns and that defense. My name is Andy Billman. Thank you for checking this out. Go to at official Cleveland sports, believe in the land.com for all of your fun goodies. Also believe in the land YouTube page. Have a good day. Browns, Ravens, Buckeyes, big win. A lot of fun going on in the football as September comes to a close. Thank you.